you're transported back to 1966. In a remote corner of China, an orphan boy is born into unimaginable hardship. Survival's a daily fight. Dreams are a rare luxury. Fast forward to today, that boy has built an empire. It's shaking the electric vehicle world. His name, Wang Shangfu. His company, BYD. Now he's threatening Tesla, the EV king, right here on British soil. Could this upset rewrite the future of UK driving? Wang Shangfu's story, it's defiance against the odds. Born into poverty, orphaned as a teen, he clawed out of despair to become a billionaire innovator. From a tiny Shenzhen workshop, he's turned BYD into a powerhouse. But here's the thing. In 2023, BYD outsold Tesla 526,000 to 484,000 pure EVs in just one quarter. Now Wang's targeting Britain, where Tesla's sleek designs and Elon Musk's charisma have long reigned. How did an orphan with nothing take on the world's top tech titan? And why should British drivers even care? Rewind to 1995. BYD starts as a scrappy battery maker. By 2003, it's the world's biggest. Then came the cars, cheap at first, but game changing with electric. In 2008, Warren Buffett, the sage of Omaha, drops $230 million for a 10% stake. BYD's value soars. Fast forward to 2023, they're not just catching up, they're leading. Over 3 million vehicles in the year, hybrids included. Tesla, 1.8 million. Now BYD's hitting the UK with models like the Atto 3 and Han, challenging Tesla's Model Y. This isn't just a company, it's a revolution, kicking down Britain's motor industry door. So things are about to get real in the UK. Tesla's got the edge, over 1,200 superchargers nationwide, a brand screaming innovation and a loyal fan base. But BYD's plain different. Affordable EVs with a battery so safe, it can change everything. The Atto 3, 36,000 pounds. Tesla's Model Y though, is 45,000 pounds. Now, for British drivers, this could mean cheaper electric driving, safer roads, and a shake-up of the future. So the big question, will British drivers embrace this newcomer, or is Tesla's grip too strong? Now, this isn't just about horsepower or price tags. It's about Britain's electric soul. Will it be a Silicon Valley visionary or a Chinese orphan defying destiny? Over the next few minutes, we'll uncover Wang's journey from losing everything to building an empire. We'll dive into the battle unfolding on UK roads. A story of grit, genius, and a question that could change how you drive forever. It begins with a boy who refused to give up. So step back to 1966, and Wang Shangfu is born in Wuyi County, Anhui. Chinese cultural revolution and a deadly famine hit the province hard. His parents toil to feed eight children. Life's tough, tight knit until it shatters. At 13, Wang watches his father waste away from liver cancer, a carpenter whose hands can't build anymore. Two years later, 1981, his mother collapses in the fields, dying before help comes. Now orphaned at 15, Wang's left with grief and a crumbling home. But his siblings step up. His brother quits school for a factory job. His five sisters rush into marriages. His sister-in-law, she sells jewellery door-to-door, borrowing cash, scraping 10 won a week. That's about one pound in today's money to keep Wang in school. That sacrifice was his lifeline. School becomes Wang's way out. He dives into studies, fueled by curiosity about how things work, especially science. 1983, age 17, his hard work pays off. He wins a spot at Central South University, Hunan, a top engineering school. 
There he tackles metallurgical physical chemistry, metals, materials, text building blocks. And while peers sleep, Wang burns the midnight oil, turning grief into grit. His brother and sister-in-law gift him a Shanghai brand watch. Not just a timepiece, a promise they believe in him. 1987 and Wang graduates. He heads to Beijing for a master's at the non Research Institute. It's no ordinary school though, a hub for cutting edge science. Now Wang zeroes in on batteries, a field few cared about then, but one that would power the world. He researches rechargeable cells, nickel cadmium, and a project called New Inert Node for Electrolysis. Technical stuff hinting at future genius. By 1990, he's deputy director, a rising star. But he's not content in a lab. He wants to build something bigger. This orphan's spark is about to catch fire. From a boy with nothing, Wang forges a path, one that could electrify British roads. But the next question, could someone with no money, no connections, no safety net, really take on industry giants and win? It's 1995, Wang Shangfu, now 29, sees an opportunity in Shenzhen, a fishing village turned hotspot. With a $400,000 loan from his cousin Liu Xing Yang, he starts BYD. Build your dreams in a modest workshop. His target, the booming battery market for mobile phones. Japan's giants, Sanyo, Sony, dominate with automation. Wang's play, hire thousands to assemble nickel cadmium batteries by hand, which slashes costs. This undercuts the competition. Scrappy, but bold, and it works. By 2002, BYD scores big. Wang sends Stella Lee, his top sales manager, to Motorola's Georgia HQ. With broken English and a box of batteries, she pitches relentlessly, and they cave. Nokia and Ericsson follow. By 2003, BYD overtakes Sanyo, the world's largest battery maker, selling 150 million units in three years. Then 2020, the blade battery. Lithium iron phosphate, which is cheaper, safer, and built for EVs. Wang's not just playing, he's rewriting the rules. So why does this matter to Britain? Batteries are EVs at heart, and BYD's got an edge. Their blade battery, lithium iron phosphate LFP, is less fire prone than Tesla's lithium ion. Nail test, Tesla explodes. BYD barely smokes. For UK drivers, safer commutes and lower prices. The Atto 3, that's £36,000. The Model Y, on the other hand, is £45,000. BYD's vertical integration, making their own parts, keeps costs down. Unlike Tesla's supplier reliance, Wang outsmarts tech titans and turns BYD into the battery king of Shenzhen. But batteries are just the start. The real test lies ahead. Can this battery empire translate its genius into cars and convince British drivers to take a chance? January 2003, Wang stuns everyone. He buys Quinshushan Automobile, a failing car maker for $37 million. BYD's a battery company, Wang doesn't even drive. Investors panic and they dump the shares. BYD loses $346 million in market value in just two days. Critics call it madness, but Wang sees a vision. Leverage battery know-how to break into cars. 2005, BYD launches the F3, a budget sedan eerily like the Toyota Corolla. Parts interchangeable. Not original, and the press slams it as a knockoff. But at half the price, around £5,000, it flies off the lots. 100,000 sales in a year, a Chinese brand record. Still, the copycat stigma sticks. 2008, Tesla's Roadster rolls out. Sleek, fast, and worlds apart from BYD's boxes. BYD's teetering. Until 2008, Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway swoops in with investment of $230 million for 10%. This is a vote of confidence from a top investor. But is it enough to push BYD past Tesla into the EV big leagues? 
Same year, 2008, BYD swings at EVs. The F3 DM, which is a plug-in hybrid, hits the market. Then the E6, fully electric, 300 kilometers of range, not flashy, but affordable and practical. The world laughs until the numbers roll in. BYD selling and fast. 2010, Elon Musk on TV chuckles at BYD. Have you seen their car? Uh, Warren Buffett owns 10% stake in that. Uh, why do you laugh? BYD is trying to compete. Why do you laugh? Have you seen their car? I have seen their cars, yes. In fact, at the Berkshire Hathaway meeting, I saw their cars. Yeah. Well, they are on a different... They are on a di Tell me Sorry. why you're laughing. Um, you don't see them at all as a competitor? No. Why is that? I mean, they offer a lower price point. I, I, don't, th I don't think they have a great product. Why is that? Um, I, I don't think it's, it's particularly attractive. The technology is, is not very strong. Um, and, and BYD as a company has pretty severe problems in their home turf in China. Right. Uh, so... I think they, that their focus is and rightly should be on making sure they don't die in China. Okay. What about for you? When are you going to turn around, turn a profit on Tesla? Well, we think probably 2013. Tesla's Roadster, a 400 kilometer range rocket, and BYD's E6, a boxy taxi. But by 2020, Blade Battery ups the ante. 600 kilometers and no crash fires. Tesla's 700 kilometer packs, occasional blazes. Tesla chases quality, BYD volume and safety. Now by 2023, BYD flips the script. It outsells Tesla in pure EVs, 526,000 to 484,000 in Q4 alone. Wang is now the car king and he's got Britain in his sights. But here's the catch. Will British drivers buy BYD's tech or stick with Tesla's dazzle? 2023, BYD storms Britain. The Atto 3, just £36,000 SUV. 420 kilometres of a range. London to Manchester, poof, that's easy. The Han, a £70,000 luxury sedan, 521 kilometres and a sleek design. Is it a secret weapon? The blade battery? Nail punches it, no fire, no fuss. Lithium iron, that flares up. BYD pitches safety, but early sales, mm, they're tepid. Europe, just 1.1% EV share in year one. Britain is a tough nut to crack. Tesla's not sweating though. The Model Y, which is £45,000 with a 533 kilometer range, Britain's EV darling. Why? It's because of that supercharger network. As I mentioned before, over 1,200 stations Cornwall to Scotland. 15 minute charges. BYD's got zero superchargers and relies on patchy public stations. For UK drivers, that's maybe a deal breaker or not. Britain's EV scene is electric. In 2023, 16% of new cars are EVs, up from 2% a decade ago. The government is pouring in 1.6 billion pounds into charges, tax breaks, and a petrol ban by 2035. Now, in 2024, Auto Trader surveyed. 60% of buyers want range, which is Tesla's forte. 40% prioritize price. BYD's edge. Europe's a warning, and BYD's 1.1% market share shows trust lags. Can they flip it in the UK? BYD's tech is legit. Blade batteries a safety marvel, with models like the £25,000 Dolphin come in, they're flooding the market. Tesla's got hype, but BYD's got value. And British trust is beginning to warm, but Tesla's got an ace. That's called self-driving. Can BYD keep up if Tesla's cars can drive themselves on UK roads? June 2025. Tesla's full self-driving FSD is about to launch in the US. Cars handle streets, highways, parking, zero human input. Elon Musk calls it a game changer. The UK is next. Now, experts say early 2026 or Q1 or Q2 of 2026. So, so picture this, London to Birmingham, M25, hands off, sipping coffee, Tesla does the work. Now for British drivers, not just convenience, it's a revolution. 
In a 2024 YouGov poll, 55% of EV buyers would pay extra for autonomy. And Tesla is betting big. BYD, no FSD yet, but they're not idle. By 2026, over 10 UK models from the £25,000 Dolphin to the £70,000 Han, dwarfing Tesla's four. Blade battery keeps costs low, safety high, with a 600 kilometer range and no fire risk. Now look, here's my take. Tesla wins tech savvy buyers with autonomy and superchargers. But BYD grabs a price conscious family with fleet buyers like taxis, with variety and value. In my opinion, both can win, but just in different lanes. By 2030, BYD snags 15% of the UK EVs. That's 150,000 cars a year. Tesla holds 25% at 250,000. BYD's edge, volume and price. Tesla's, which is tech and brand. So, so what are the hurdles? The UK needs 300,000 more chargers. BYD must catch up there. And the EU tariffs on Chinese EVs are up to 35%. And that could hit UK prices. So what's the wild card? Elon Musk's robo-taxi dream of self-driving Teslas as taxis that could flip everything. So will Brits even care if their car can't self-drive? Tesla bets yes, and FSD could be their knockout. BYD says no, and they're, they're banking on affordability and that safety might win. But the truth, no one really knows. This showdown's about your next car, your daily drive, Britain's electric future. Tesla's tech or BYD's value? Drop your predictions. Team Tesla or Team BYD? And hit like and subscribe if you like this video. So let's keep exploring the tech shaping our world.